Hello, I am Dr. Azal from MedicoVisual.com and in today's visual lecture, we will talk about the life cycle or I should say a replicative cycle of monkeypox virus. But before discussing that, the question arises that what is the life cycle? I will explain it with a very simple example that let's suppose here is a baby and of course this is not the virus baby, it's a human baby and let's say uh, this is a female baby and she grows and she becomes a uh, teenager and ultimately she becomes an adult and then she marries someone and then they have a baby and then this baby will again develop into a teenager and adult and this cycle continues so that is the cycle of life that is the life cycle life cycle applies to any organism if we come to viruses let's suppose here is the virus and we are talking about monkeypox virus this virus infects a cell first it attaches to the cell and it enters inside the cell and after entering into the cell it replicates inside the cell and ultimately it makes its copies and these copies are released and one of the copy will then again infect a new cell even maybe in another host in a new host so that's how the generations of viruses they continue to proceed and that is the life cycle well not it is not life cycle technically the virus they are thought that they are not living organism because they cannot live outside the host so they call it replicative cycle rather than using the term life cycle we use the term replicative cycle for viruses but it is just like life cycle of a bacteria or parasite or even human so in a nutshell, what is the replicative cycle of virus? It is the series of changes that occur uh, after the virus enters the cell and after entering it generates a new generation of virus progeny. So all these changes from starting from the attachment of virus entry into the cell and after entry into the cell, what series of changes occur within the cell and then the after it is released outside the uh, outside the cell so all these series of changes series of events that are occurring they constitutes the replicative cycle of any virus and today our focus will be the monkeypox virus now here is a thing that uh, we do not have much studies available specifically on monkey virus but we have done a lot of research not i have done rather different scientists from all over the world they have done research on vaccinia virus which is one of the species of the same genus to which the monkeypox belongs so the life cycle or replicative cycle rather I, sh I should say the replicative cycle of monkeypox virus is actually based on the study of vaccinia virus and it is presumed that the replicative cycle of monkeypox virus as well as smallpox virus is almost same as that of vaccinia virus. So let's start the discussion. So here let's review the structure of monkeypox virus. We have discussed it in a 3D model in last lecture. So let's recap it. So here is the double stranded DNA but I haven't shown the proper orientation. It's a very simplified diagram. Actually it is double stranded but I have just simplified it and I have shown a single line. So double stranded DNA here. Then we have after double stranded DNA there we have this is the double stranded DNA. Then we have this thing. What is this? There is this virus. It carries it's on DNA dependent RNA polymerase and we will discuss its function in a few minutes and then uh, this this uh, DNA is covered from outside by this nucleocapsid core so capsid core is here basically this is the capsid core and this capsid core along with the, this nucleus well not nucleus along with its DNA this combination is called nucleocapsid core then we have these lateral bodies and uh, last time we had discussed about that and outside is the two layers of envelope and inner envelope this is the inner envelope and we have an outer envelope now the proteins on the inner envelope they are slightly different from from the proteins that are studied on the outer envelope 
So here is a simplified depiction of a human cell. Now, it can infect a variety of cells. The monkeypox can infect a variety of cells, but classically, let's suppose that it is the skin cell. So here is, let's say, a skin cell. And uh, just like many different types of cells in our body, it is covered by the glycosaminoglycans. They are very complicated and complex molecules, and I won't go into their details. We might discuss it someday when we will talk about the biochemistry of glycose aminoglycans so right now uh, you just understand that it is covered it is decorated with the glycose aminoglycans and the monkeypox virus exploit this and this it uses the glycose aminoglycans as a receptor to interact with with the cell and ultimately it enters the cell let's see how so here is a monkeypox virus and basically this is the extracellular virion is covered by double envelope there is also a mature virion which is covered by single envelope so this extracellular virion which is covered by double envelope it has its uh, tubular proteins covering uh, studied into the outer envelope they will interact with glycosaminoglycans and perhaps some other proteins of the cells as well and after that interaction there is some spontaneous changes that occur in this outer membrane such that this outer envelope is disrupted and it may be even broken and as it happens now we have a virus particle which is identical to mature virion now this virus particle it can fuse with the cell membrane of the host cell and here we also have mature virion and the mechanism of mature virion from this point onward will be very similar. So here is the mature virion, here is the extracellular virion. So ultimately they come to the same point here and here it will fuse, their cell membrane will fuse and the nucleocapsid core along with the lateral bodies they will enter inside the cell and the envelope will remain outside. This is the one way of entry of the nucleocapsid core of the monkeypox virus into the cell. This is one way and that is by the fusion of inner envelope with the cell membrane of the host cell. The other mechanism can be that rather than fusion it may be endocytosed like this. So we will not go into detail of endocytosis. We have already discussed it in when we talk about hepatitis B virus and when we talk talked about the coronavirus. Right now you just see that endocytosis can also occur here. So it can enter as a result of membrane fusion or as a result of endocytosis. Now uh, to make our life easier we will just show a one virus particle entering into the cell. Actually there are numerous virus particles that at a single time might be infecting a cell but for sake of simplicity we are just focusing on a single particle. So here we have this virus particle and its DNA dependent RNA polymerase will work to form M mRNA transcripts and these mRNA transcripts are of some early proteins. Why it is actually doing so? Actually this DNA is the brain of a virus. To work inside the cell it needs to express its DNA and to express its DNA it further is it first need to uncoat. It first need to come out this DNA it first need to come out of the this capsid core and to come out of the capsid core it needs a special protein and this DNA dependent RNA polymerase will make the mRNA transcript of that protein which is required for uncoating and some other proteins as well which we do not precisely know and I won't go into that details. So these early genes these early mRNA transcripts they can easily come out of the capsid core and they will be worked upon by the cytoplasmic they will be worked upon by the cytoplasmic ribosomes and ultimately the uncoating proteins and some other early proteins will be synthesized. Now remember this is one of the few types of the viruses, one of the few known types of the viruses that entirely completes their replicative cycle within the cytoplasm only. They entirely uh, complete the replicative cycle in cytoplasm, they do not go into any other organelle of our cell. So these are the uh, proteins that are required to uncoat the, this virus particle and they will do so and our DNA, not our DNA, viral DNA will be exposed. Now this DNA dependent RNA polymerase 
we'll synthesize some more mrna transcripts and one of them is the transcript required to create another star <laughs> not another star i mean now it is created it has created an other uh, protein another enzyme and the name of this enzyme is dna dependent dna dependent DNA polymerase, DNA dependent, DNA pole. Now that was DNA dependent RNA polymerase. This is DNA dependent DNA polymerase. What it means is that it can read this DNA and it can synthesize the DNA molecules. That one, this one was reading this DNA and was synthesizing mRNAs. But it will synthesize the DNA. Why it is required, I will tell you in a moment. Again, it will work here and it will copy this DNA. It will read this DNA it, and it will create a lots of copies of this DNA. And these copies of DNA will be packed into the coat and other envelopes and other stuff to form the next generation of this virus. It will create a copies, lots of copies of this virus. So we, we had the single DNA and from the single DNA, a number of copies of DNA are created. Again, to make our lives simpler, we will just focus on a single copy. Actually, there might be millions of copies that might be created. In next step, again, this uh, DNA dependent RNA polymerase, it will again um, make the mRNA transcripts and those mRNA transcripts will be translated by the uh, cytoplasmic ribosomes of the host cell of this human cell and they will create a number of proteins that are required to assemble this virus. So it, they will create the capsid core protein, the copy of this RNA polymerase, DNA dependent RNA polymerase and the proteins that are packed together as lateral bodies. We do not know the precise details of this process so I will just mention here that it happens. I won't go into detail of this. So now we have another copy of this virus and it consists of DNA, the proteins that are packed into it and nucleocapsid core and lateral bodies. Now at this stage, this virus is immature and it is simply called immature virion, immature virus particle or immature virion. So this is the immature virion and now it needs two envelopes. So now let's see how it is enveloped, how it is wrapped into two envelopes. So let's see that process. So you remember inside the cell we also have endoplasmic reticulum and let's isolate a single endoplasmic reticulum. Now this endoplasmic reticulum will be decorated by viral proteins and what these viral proteins will do is that they will cause the stabilization of breaks into endoplasmic reticulum. Actually, naturally, some breaks are formed into the endoplasmic reticulum and these breaks are temporary. They are fixed later. But what these proteins will do that they will prevent the repairing or fixing of these breaks. And as a result, these breaks are stabilized. So as a result, these types of segments of membrane of endoplasmic reticulum are formed. Later, some other viral proteins are also attacked here. And as a result of attachment of those viral proteins, these crescents of endoplasmic reticulum are formed. These crescents will then uh, surround this virus, uh, this immature virion and ultimately they will form the inner envelope. And now at this stage this is this virus particle is called mature virion. So this is mature virion or mature virus particle. Now it needs another envelope but before that let me tell you that at this stage, if cell lysis occur, if cell breaks down at this stage, these mature virion may be released into blood and that is the source of mature virion into the blood. So in blood, we might find the mature virion, we might find the extracellular virion that are released as a result of exocytosis that, that we will just see and even we might find the immature virions as well as a result of early cell lysis. So to form the other envelope, we have this Golgi apparatus. Uh, this Golgi apparatus will also be decorated by certain proteins of the virus, certain viral proteins. One of them is the tubular protein and there are many important proteins that play their role here. One of them is VP37, we will discuss in a moment. So what will happen now that this vesicle, it surrounds the mature virion like this, then another vesicle might surround it like this and a number of vesicles from the Golgi apparatus, they might surround it like this to form double membranes. 
actually now we will have three membranes this this membrane then this membrane and then this membrane so three membrane will be formed but before discussing that let me tell you something about a new drug to treat the smallpox and monkeypox the name of this drug is Tecovirimet. So Tecovirimet, as I have told you that a protein called viral protein 37 or VP37, VP37, that is required for this wrapping process. That is required for this wrapping process. Uh, this Tecovirimet or Tecoviramet, whatever the name is, uh, it blocks this VP37 and as a result of this, this wrapping process, this wrapping of mature virion, this process fails and the number of extracellular virion that are released out of the body is drastically reduced and thus the ability of virus to infect other cells is reduced and this is actually beneficial because the immune system will actually take care of the rest of things and it will destroy all the remaining virus parts particles and patient might recover soon. So this is the mechanism of action of tecovirimet. So let's move forward that ultimately we have the three layers, inner envelope and outer envelope and another part of this wrapped envelope. Now it is the time that this virus particle must be exocytosed. So it goes to the cell membrane and it fuses with the cell membrane, this outer membrane and ultimately this virus particle is released. Now this is the extracellular virus particle and now it has two envelopes. One of the envelope, outermost envelope that was basically the temporary envelope of the wrapped virion. So that three layered virion was called wrapped virion. So wrapped virion contains three layers and the outermost layer, it is attached to this cell membrane. It remains attached to the cell membrane of the host and the virus, the extracellular virion with the two envelopes is released outside the cell. Now this extracellular virion is ready to infect the other cell, other neighboring cell of the host or it may be released outside the body and it may find a new host. So that is the replicative cycle of monkeypox virus. Thank you so much for watching this video.